What's going on everyone? This is Jim from RC After Dark. Uh, I wanted to give you guys some project updates here and uh, you know just kind of share with everybody what exactly is going on with all these projects here. Um, the WL Toys. You guys haven't seen the WL Toys in a week or so and that is because I stripped out the spur gear in the parking lot after I put on the larger pinion gear. Um, this actually happened when I first bought the NQD Terran 2 jet boat when I was taking it out on its maiden voyage as a stock boat before I did anything with it. Um, I took this down to Wolverine Lake and uh, messed around in the gravel parking lot for a minute and stripped out the spur gear in the parking lot. So let's open that guy up and I'll give you a quick view of the spur gear. All right, as you can see, there's our spur gear, and she is pretty well cleaned off. Yep, has a little bit of teeth over here on this outer edge, um, but nothing, nothing down the middle. Clean that baby right off. Um, I did order a metal spur gear. I had to order it from WL Toys since I'm still running this WL Toys uh, main shaft here. Um, so I ordered a metal spur gear from WL Toys. It's in shipping. Don't know when it's going to be here. So WL Toys is on the uh, is on the standby list at the moment and uh, just waiting on a new metal gear for that. This is the last plastic gear on this truck. So hopefully once we put a metal one on here, she'll be good to go. Um, I'd like to see the same hydroplane water before the snow flies, so hopefully that uh, gear will show up quick. But that's where we're sitting with the WL Toys. It is down for the moment with this uh, stripped out spur gear here. All right, moving on. Just like that, everything changed in a flash. Um, for the new viewers, or for the old viewers, you've seen all of this many times before. Uh, for the new viewers, hey, check out all these new parts. <laughs> um, I have a whole mess of parts here that need to go on the TF2. I haven't messed with this in a while. I've been intending on lifting this truck for a couple weeks now, and I just haven't gotten around to it. been really busy with a lot of stuff. So um, I actually have, for the new viewers, I have six of those gold wheels in the background. Those are Boom Racing, Aluminum. 2.2 uh, wheels. I can't remember the exact design name on the wheels, uh, but I have six of those and six of these Proline 2.2 uh, Super Swampers. Um, not 2.2 XLs, just standard 2.2s. Um, I ordered a set of axles for the truck, a set of 110 millimeter shocks so I can lift it and have longer shocks to accommodate, and then a small hitch receiver on the, on the far side there. Uh, wheels, like I said, I have six of those wheels and six of these tires. Reason being is I wanted to get five tires so I could put a spare uh, Super Swamper in the bed of the truck. Um, but they don't sell these tires, the Super Swampers, as, as a single tire. And they don't sell those 2.2 wheels as a, sing as a single wheel. Um, Boom Racing sells their 1.9s as a single wheel or a set of four. Uh, so if you want to have a spare, it's really easy to, to accommodate. Uh, but with the 2.2s, they only sell those in sets of twos. So had to get six of them in order to have a, a fifth wheel for a spare. Um, back to the truck. Haven't gotten around to lifting it yet. Don't know why. I really kind of like the way that the truck stands right now, or the stance on the truck currently. I, I like the way it sits. Um, but in order to clear these bigger tires, I'm going to have to jack up the truck. So obviously I'm going to have to jack up the truck. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Um... Suspension components needed. Yeah, I didn't need the shocks. Um, didn't necessarily need the axles, but I got the axles because they were on sale and it's going to improve the turning radius on the truck. Which will improve its off-road ability in general. Alright, so this is one of the, uh, these are boom racing as well. I believe this is a direct copy off of an, off of an RC four-wheel drive. Um, Dana 44, or I can't remember what the exact number is, but it's the 44 axle from RC four-wheel drive. 
um, and the RC four wheel drive diff covers will work on this axle. It's the same bolt pattern, um, according to the axle's uh, web page or the web page on the axle. It did say that the aftermarket ARB covers from RC four wheel drive will fit on here. Um, reason I bought this axle, other than price, was the turning radius. This has a 45 degree turning radius. And my trail finder definitely does not have a 45 degree turning radius. So uh, this will greatly improve my uh, the truck's off-road capabilities uh, all around or in general. So new axles need to go on the truck. Taking off this uh, three-link suspension mount and just going to be running off of leaf springs. So that's where we sit with the TF2. I uh, have all the stuff that needs to go on there. These big old super swampers. I know I've showed these many times, guys. I'm so sorry for that. Um, but just to give a little size difference here, this Proline tire here, the Sandpaw, I run this on the WL Toys. This tire is 2.7 inches wide by 5.22 inches tall. See that sand paw sitting next to that super swamper. And that super swamper is just a pinch taller than that sand paw. Uh, and that sand paw is a big tire. Big old tire. Almost as wide too. I mean once you squish in the sides a little bit for wheels. Almost as wide. A little bit shorter. But definitely uh, just as tall as this tire. Now let's take a look at both of these tires compared to the RC four wheel drive 2.2 mudslingers. All right, now here we go. Sandpaw on the right, Super Swamper on the left, 2.2 RC four wheel drive mudslinger in the center. Um, you can see that the Sandpaw is obviously taller than that 2.2 slinger, and this tire is is as well. Um, yes, there is a little bit of weight sitting on the truck. But even if I took, take the weight off of the truck, it's really not changing that too much. So the truck needs to be lifted slightly in order to clear these bigger tires. And I want to be able to run 2.2 tires um, on the truck. This 2.2 is uh, five and a half inches tall, which seems to be right in the middle of the 2.2 uh, tire range. This 2.2 is small for a 2.2. It's 4.88 inches tall, so roughly 4.9 inches um, in overall height, and this one is five and a half inches. So pretty small for, for a 2.2 as far as tires go. Um, so once again, you need to lift the truck in order to accommodate these tires. Don't necessarily want to lift it. Like I said, I like the way the truck sits, but in order to make things jive, I'm going to have to lift it. So, all right, moving on. Like I said, I like the way the truck sits right now. Don't necessarily want to lift it, but gonna have to lift it in order to clear those tires. Uh, truck does have a fair amount of suspension droop right now. You can see I lifted that thing up about a half inch before the tires start coming off the ground. Um, so I know I can def I can definitely uh, add some lift blocks and adjust this and put longer shocks on it and be able to clear those tires without a problem. Um, so, uh, let's move on. You know what, while we're still sitting here, just in case anybody was wondering how tall this truck actually is. Got a tape measure out right now. Um, it's sitting at nine and a quarter inches to the top of the roof with its current suspension sag. But if I lift it up to the point where the tires are starting to come off the ground, it goes up to 10 and a quarter inches. So roughly a half inch of sag on the suspension. Um, as far as overall height or whatever, probably not necessarily a half inch of total sag, uh, but it does go from nine and three quarters on total height to 10 and a quarter. Um, so that's roughly a half inch difference there. So the truck is pretty big as it is, but, uh, it will be getting bigger. Moving on. And kapow, just like that, the boat has appeared. All right, the NQD, uh, where do we stand with that? Um, last video that I ran with the NQD, I broke a prop in the back. Um, that was unfortunate, sucked in a little piece of gravel, it got wedged in the back and broke the prop. 
Um, I sent the baby downstream with a broken prop and then uh, played hell trying to get it back upstream uh, with one blade on my prop. So, uh, nevertheless, I ordered some parts to repair that. What I'm holding in my hand is a piece of dowel rod, uh, even though it's square. It is labeled as dowel rod on the uh, actual sticker. This is some 3 8 by 38 inch uh, wooden dowel rod. I have two pieces of this and two pieces of half inch by uh, 38 inch long um, dowel rod as well, which is square. But once again, like I said, it's uh, labeled as dowel rod. Um, I'm sure there's a sticker on one of these things that actually says that so I don't look like a total idiot here. Square dowel, 3 eighths by 38, or is that 36? Yeah, it might be 36, 38. All right, so I was planning on making a boat trailer with this stuff, um, have some felt here. This I was going to put on the bunks of the trailer so the boat had something nice, nice and soft to sit on. And I bought this uh, fishing sticks. This is a uh, fishing pole holder uh, for, for like fishing on the shoreline. And it expands outward. I was going to use this as a expandable tongue on the trailer. Um, so the tongue of the trailer would be adjustable, uh, you know, for how big your boat is. Um, I don't know. I haven't gotten around to doing anything with it yet. Um, obviously, I have all the parts laying here. I did start making some basic cuts on it uh, to make the the long the length to make the outsides of the trailer. Um, but I just haven't gotten any too far with it. I was using a handsaw, got about halfway through, three quarters of the way through, and uh, had enough for the night. So <laughs> uh, I stopped right there. Uh, but that's where we're sitting at with this particular boat trailer. Now, a lot of you guys are probably going to be disappointed in me. Um, I did order a boat trailer as well um, online on the old uh, on the old eBay, and I ordered this from uh, this gentleman here, Elon Sand Sandowski. And uh, what is this store? RC Scale Parts. Might be his uh, website, RC Scale Pro. So that's where I ordered it from. Um, <laughs> I actually had to order this from Israel. <laughs> so uh, this is a boat trailer for the NQD, specifically for the NQD. Uh, this gentleman made this trailer on a 3D printer. Uh, came with tires. I had to actually order his demo model. He didn't have any with axles that were available. Um, I did get a hold of him separately and was able to get him to send me his demo model, which had a few scratches, but it's not a big deal because this thing, this thing's going to be going off-road anyways. Uh, so this is a complete trailer kit. Um, has all the individual pieces of the trailer in here. Frame rails and whatnot. Axles nuts and bolts and screws and what have you and some uh, basic instructions on how to assemble the entire trailer um, and once again this is RC Pro RC Scale Pro so I did buy a trailer as well um, I do still plan on making a trailer but um, for the time being, I don't know. I figured it would be uh, interesting to have a just to buy one. <laughs> so uh, support your local RC guys uh, and order a trailer from this guy, um, Elan Elon Sandowski, and he was in Israel. Like I said, uh, here's his here's his uh, site RC Scale Pro on eBay. And uh, once again, this is a specific trailer built specifically for the NQD Terran 2 jet boat. So, figured we'll give this a shot. Alright, here we go into the boat. Um, so, I broke a prop on this the last time out. I ordered a new jet drive online. I uh, was thinking that this was going to be a little bit bigger than the one that was currently in there. And uh, 
yeah, it came with a 380 motor, but it was just cheaper to get it with the 380 motor. Um, like right around uh, $25, I want to say, maybe a little bit less uh, for this jet drive. Uh, once again, it's all over the place online. It, uh, it comes in white or it comes in black. You can get this with a brushless motor. I did investigate this pretty thoroughly. Uh, you know, checked out the size and everything else and tried comparing between the brush motor and the brushless motor to make sure that the jet drive pump was the same on both units and it did seem to be the same. Uh, but I haven't, uh, when I put it up next to the, next to my jet drive, the inlet on my jet drive is just a little bit bigger than this inlet. So I think I'm going to just stay with the stock NQD jet drive and not mess with this one. Uh, plus the turning radius on this one isn't all that good. Um, yeah, I could probably cut a little, bit, a little bit of plastic off of each corner here and get this to turn a little bit sharper. But it's really not that impressive the way it is. Uh, the inside looks nice. I mean, it's all uh, very nicely done. Uh, excuse me if I get this to focus here, guys. There we go. Um, it seems to be built pretty well. It's a nice straight shot right on down through here. So it definitely looks like it'll flow some water. But like I said, the inlet is just a little bit smaller than the, than the NQD. And uh, we'll just do a little side-by-side -side comparison here real quick. If I may. Sorry for the weird angles here, people. I'm just trying to get this so you can actually see the size difference. All right, so if we line it all up, you can see that it's a little bit more than, well, right around a quarter inch to a half inch shorter than the stock NQD jet drive. Uh, I'm not sure if it's any wider or not. Uh, let me whip out a tape measure. All right, so I busted out the tape measure. It's three quarters of an inch from here to here on this little ridge. And it's the same, same width on the uh, NQD. So nothing's different. It's not any wider than the NQD. It does have six screws that hold it down instead of four. Uh, but like I said, it's it's roughly a half inch shorter. So um, the opening on the NQD is a half inch larger or half inch longer than this one. So it's letting in more water. Uh, so I'm not too sure. Probably just going to run with the NQD drive. All right. Now, when I did order this, I ordered two extra prop shafts for this this unit just because I was thinking that it was going to be the one that I was going to put in there. But I'm not, so I have two extras. <laughs> but I did also order two stock props for the NQD while I was at it. And I ordered a new coupler that goes between the uh, shaft and the prop, or the, between the motor and the uh, prop shaft, um, just because I drilled mine out when it was still sitting on the jet drive, and uh, I don't think I have it too square. So um, I ordered a separate one so I could re-drill this out off of the boat uh, just to make sure it's square. Uh, so it's sitting on the motor pinion uh, nice and even. I think mine is just a little bit off on the pinion and might possibly possibly be spinning inside the shaft every once in a while with this coupler. So I ordered a new coupler. Um, as far as the props go, all right, here is the prop and shaft that goes with that new jet drive. And here is the prop that comes on the NQD. You can see that the NQD is uh, a little bit wider. But the other one has more of a pitch on the blade. So the one on the right is definitely made to flow some serious water. Uh, just by the way the pitch is on the blade. This baby is meant to move some, uh, meant to move some volume. Whereas this one, eh, you know, not so good. Um, so I don't know. There's a question in the air as to which jet drive is actually better. Uh, this one definitely has a larger, uh, shaft on the actual, um, prop shaft or whatever. The prop shaft is larger. So, um, that's a good thing. It's stronger. But, uh, once again, I, I'm not too sure. Um, don't think the jet drive is actually any better. I'm not, I don't know. It might be, but 
it might not be. <laughs> I know I'm bouncing back and forth here, pandering like crazy. Uh, for the moment, I'm just going to put this uh, prop on it and run it like this. Um, like I said, I don't think this jet drive is worth the hassle of trying to put on. I don't know if it's going to do that, make that much of a difference. So for the time being, I'm just going to throw on a new uh, NQD prop and just run it like that. I did order two of these, so I have an extra. If anything, I may try to I may try to retrofit the. Uh, if anything, I may try to retrofit this prop onto the NQD drive, or even possibly take the guts out of here and try to retrofit them onto the NQD. I'm pretty sure they have a better setup on the inside as far as bearings and whatnot. So I don't know. I may try to retrofit some parts to it. Might not. Um, there is a YouTube channel called Youngsters Jet Boats. Youngsters Jet Boats. And that guy makes his own uh, jet pumps. And he does an outstanding job on it. Um, I want to say he's in uh, Manchester, England, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but he's definitely in the UK. And he does an outstanding job on jet drives. His jet drives are gigantic in comparison to these. And uh, they are meant for a high RPM motor. Um, so it, <laughs> he's got a line basically going around the block uh, trying to get a hold of his jet drives. Um, I'm currently trying to get a, I'm currently in contact with him trying to get a hold of one of these jet drives uh, or one of his jet drives. And for comparison, his jet drives, when you install them, you actually have to cut to the outer edge of these screw holes because it's that much wider. And then you have to come all the way up here to the crease on the boat with your cut um, just to accommodate this larger jet drive unit. And uh, the, the nozzle on the back is uh, fairly significant as well. It's basically it comes down to the bottom of this one and up to the top of the crease on the boat. So it's a gigantic nozzle coming off the end of it. So in the future, I'm looking to get one of his jet drives. If I'm going to do any modif modifying to the boat as far as cutting things out to make things fit, I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to try to accommodate his jet drive versus trying to put this other jet drive on here. Um, like I said, if I put this one on here, I'm going to have to add some kind of a filler panel to accommodate it, you know, to take up the gap because this one's bigger. And with one of Youngster's jet drives, um, I'm actually going to have to remo remove material uh, to make his jet drive work. So I'd rather remove material than add material. So probably going to end up getting a, a jet drive from Youngster's jet drives. And I am no way affiliated with Mark from Youngster's Jet Drives. I'm just trying to get a hold of one and uh, throwing his name out there, you know, for everybody to check out his channel. Um, yeah, jet boats aren't new. They've been, you know, this is uh, something that's been out since like 2012, maybe earlier. Um, and I'm just now figuring it out. So uh, nevertheless, uh, Youngster's Jet Boats has been around for a little while, too. And he's been making these jet drives for a while. Um, he makes them in his backyard. Um, not 3D printed. I'm sure he's uh, kind of like molding everything himself. Uh, but he does it just just an outstanding job. Fantastic job. So uh, if you get a chance, you know, check out Youngsters Jet Drives on YouTube. Or Youngsters Jet Boats on YouTube. Excuse me. Youngsters Jet Boats. Um, so that's where we stand with the jet boat, guys. I uh, just need to put a new prop on it for the time being and she will be good to go. And I also need, on a different note... Um, I noticed that the boat kind of rides a little bit to the left in the water. Um, so I'm probably going to add a little bit of weight on the right-hand side to try to compensate that, uh, you know, try to level out the boat a little bit. But the uh, the blue light special will run again here shortly. <laughs> um, that's kind of what I'm going to name the boat, man, the blue light special like Kmart. <laughs> so uh, just because of the blue lights on the front. So uh, that's it for now, guys. Uh, little project update. Still haven't lifted the TF2, but I need to lift it. I do have a trailer kit here that I can put together uh, to build a boat trailer. I do have a prop here, or all the makings here to fix the boat. So gonna fix the boat so it's good to go. And I'm waiting on a spur gear, a metal spur gear for the WL toys, uh, so we can get that thing out on the water again. Uh, so that's where we stand, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Jim from RC After Dark, and we will see you all on the next video. Thanks again.